Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today's video is a pretty simple one. I'll be going through every graphics quality setting in Metro Exodus to show you how they compare in terms of both visuals and performance. We've already explored how ray tracing looks in this game in a separate video, so the focus here is on the other graphical effects. If you're interested in ray tracing, go back and check that video. Steve has also already covered how Metro Exodus performs across a wide variety of GPUs, so we know it's a pretty demanding game, though it does deliver fantastic visuals that make it easy to see why you need a powerful GPU for ultra settings. At 1080p, for example, you'll need something like a GTX 1070 for 60 FPS gaming. With cards we usually see doing well at this resolution, like the RX 580, only delivering a 40 FPS experience. Hopefully we can improve the performance for owners of mid-range GPUs without too much impact of visuals with our recommendations in this video. And for those interested at 1440p you'll need something like a GTX 1080, while at 4K the only option is the RTX 2080 Ti. Coincidentally all of the footage you see in this video was captured at 4K using the RTX 2080 Ti with our Core i9 9900K rig used for testing. As always our performance numbers here are an average of results across several GPUs from both Nvidia and AMD, both mid-range and high End, and the footage you see captured with the 2080 Ti doesn't always align with where we benchmarked. That's because we use a single benchmark run for all the performance data, which encompasses many of the visual effects used in the game, while the visual comparisons focus in on the differences in quality. This allows us to show you how each setting looks without resorting to single scene FPS spot checks that may not be reflective of a setting's typical impact in the game. By using this single benchmark pass, you'll get a general idea of how a setting can impact typical gameplay rather than only in specific scenes. And you're watching the benchmark pass here, so I've used an in-game run rather than the benchmark tool, which is more intensive than the sections of the game I've played so far, so that's why we decided to go in-game here. The one difference I've made here compared to our other optimization guides is to split out the performance impact for AMD and Nvidia GPUs for some settings. Metro Exodus includes Nvidia's Hairworks and PhysX implementations, along with a heavy tessellation option, which have noticeably different performance impacts depending on which brand of GPU you have, but we'll get to that later. Metro Exodus actually doesn't have that many tweakable settings. Like previous Metro games, a lot of the options you'd normally see are all bundled into the generic quality setting. This acts as a sort of a preset, but without the option for any further customization to things like shadow quality, textures, or lighting. But it's not a full preset either, because several other settings like motion blur, tessellation, and texture filtering are left to their own options. This makes the quality option the key thing to look at here. To be honest, it is a bit frustrating we can't tweak elements individually because I feel that would have given the best scope for optimization, but it is what it is. Instead, I'll just have to show a bunch of scenes so that you can see how each of them compare. One of the key differences between the five available modes is the lighting quality. In fact, the differences are similar to what ray traced global illumination provides in this game. The ultra and extreme modes have the darkest presentation with the highest quality shadowing and best ambient occlusion. The atmosphere when using either of these quality modes is, in my opinion, better than the brighter and less shadowed high mode, and it really adds to the game overall. The ultra and extreme modes have, I guess, a more accurate reflection of how the lighting should be interacting with the environment. While this change in lighting is most noticeable in lit indoor scenes, it's also visible outdoors though to a lesser extent. For some people, whether to use the high or ultra modes will come down to a personal preference. If you prefer brighter shadows and less ambient occlusion, high is the way to go. If you want a darker, more atmospheric experience, you'll need to use at least the ultra preset. As I mentioned in my RTX video, I feel the darker presentation is more accurate and looks better, so my choice would be ultra, though I understand why some people may not like this and go with high instead. Medium and low are also options, of course, though they bring an even brighter presentation again. It seems that with medium, ambient occlusion is largely disabled, which flattens out the image. There are differences between all five modes in terms of shadow quality. Extreme has the sharpest shadows. It's one of the very few differences I spotted between the extreme and ultra modes, and even then it's pretty subtle. As you step down through ultra to medium, shadows become less sharp. When you switch to the low mode, dynamic shadow rendering is disabled entirely and you just get fixed baked in shadows, which looks a bit crap, so ideally you'd want to use at least medium for this setting. Between the ultra and high modes, I also spotted differences in geometry level and draw distance, which also roll away further when switching down to medium or low. It's a subtle change, but if you want the best draw distances, again, ultra is what you'll need to choose. 
Screen space reflections are used for water surfaces, but only on the high modes and above with medium and low water looks flat and boring without any reflections. In terms of texture quality, I didn't spot any significant difference between the upper four modes at 4K. It's only when switching to low that the texture quality drops away noticeably, giving the game a blurry look. I also spotted some minor improvements to skin rendering at higher quality setting levels. I'm sure there's a few more things I'm missing, but those seem to be the key differences uh, in the quality setting. We're looking at the performance difference, it's no surprise to see such a large jump in performance between each of the modes because many of the graphical elements are changing with each one. Going from ultra to extreme sees a 16% average performance reduction, which considering the very minor visual difference really isn't worth it. Going from ultra to high sees things swing the other way, a 17% performance improvement. I feel these are the two key options because there are visual differences between the two, and I feel a 17% difference is pretty reasonable considering the changes. As I said earlier, the ultra mode has darker, better shadowed lighting that looks more realistic, while the high mode is brighter, which some people may prefer. I think that which presentation you personally prefer should dictate this choice. If you want the dark atmospheric look with improvements to several other areas, then ultra is for you. But if you prefer a brighter look, then high will improve your performance. Medium with its disabled screen space reflections, lower resolution shadows, and significantly toned down ambient occlusion is something I'd reserve purely for mid-range cards, despite the near 50% performance uplift over ultra. The difference between medium and ultra is significant, so I feel gamers with more powerful systems will appreciate the better visuals of ultra or even the high mode, despite the fact you will get lower performance. However, I still feel this single quality setting really should be split into several options to allow further tweaking. For example, those who prefer the brighter look of the high mode aren't able to get the sharper shadows and better draw distances of the ultra mode. The more we can tweak, the more we can optimize the visual quality and performance, and Metro really doesn't allow much in this regard. There are a small collection of settings not bundled into the quality mode. Motion blur is the first one, and again, a bit of a personal preference thing here. Having looked at all three modes, the high setting applies a pretty heavy and noticeable motion blur. It's not something I liked a whole lot. I reckon the high mode was designed with consoles in mind, which tend to make heavy use of blur for 30 FPS gaming. <laughs> one of the many benefits of having a PC not having to game at 30 FPS. Anyway, normal sees a much more subtle use of motion blur, while low largely disables the effect. Looking at the performance differences, turning the setting down from the console like high mode to either normal or low, saw a 1% performance improvement. So not a big change. This makes the choice of settings a personal preference thing. I suspect most people will want normal or low here. DLSS I covered briefly in my RTX video. This is a feature exclusive to NVIDIA's Turing RTX GPUs. In my opinion, it doesn't work very well at all. It blurs the image noticeably as if the game was using a really bad anti-aliasing technique. Switching it on gave a 23% performance improvement at 4K using a 2080 Ti without ray tracing, though this improvement can vary a lot depending on the GPU, resolution, and settings you're using. I wouldn't consider using DLSS if you need more performance and don't mind a slight reduction to sharpness, stick to the much better scaling factor setting in the game. Hairworks is where you can start to see some pretty significant performance improvements. However, there's also a sizable difference in visuals. Monsters with a fur covering look much better with Hairworks enabled. Not only is the hair a completely different color, it also covers more of the body, it ripples in the air, and it can be colored by blood and grime. Monsters without Hairworks have static, boring, pretty crappy looking hair, similar to a lot of other games. The performance hit is also quite drastic as you might expect. Only a small section of our benchmark run included Hairworks creatures, so the 1% lows are key to look at here. Disabling Hairworks saw a 13% improvement to 1% lows with NVIDIA cards, but a huge 28% improvement for AMD cards. The good news is there doesn't appear to be any performance difference between PhysX on and off, whether you have an NVIDIA GPU or AMD GPU. Even in the benchmark tool, there is no difference, and I couldn't spot any visual changes either, so yeah, really not sure what this setting does. Moving on, we have Tessellation, one of the most intensive effects in the game. Across outdoor environments in particular, there's a reasonable change in depth between the on and off modes for Tessellation. It's not a massive change, but turning Tessellation off does lead to flatter surfaces. However, Tessellation is also still active in indoor scenes where I couldn't really spot any visual changes aside from a reduced frame rate. The big issue with Tessellation in Metro Exodus is the performance hit. For NVIDIA cards, you're looking at a 17% hit through our benchmark run, but with AMD cards, that jumps up to a 27% hit on average and nearly 50% for 1% lows. 50%, that's pretty crazy. 
clearly something about tessellation in this game is overutilizing the effect, which is putting unnecessary strain on AMD hardware. AMD cards can handle a bit of light tessellation, it's a feature used in a lot of titles, but when you start to ramp it up to crazy levels, it can seriously stress out an AMD GPU relative to an NVIDIA GPU. Considering even NVIDIA GPUs are hit to the tune of nearly 20%, I'd say the game is significantly overusing tessellation given the visual differences I spotted. With such a huge performance hit, my recommendation is to disable tessellation on both NVIDIA and especially AMD GPUs. The final setting in the game is texture filtering. In the scenes I tested, I found it pretty hard to spot a difference between the two offered modes, AF16X and AF4X. There's no difference between either mode in terms of performance, so I suspect 4A games included this option purely for ultra low end GPUs, which can struggle with higher anisotropic filtering modes. It's also worth mentioning there is a shading rate option in the game. This is like a render scale option for super sampling or sub sampling, except it only modifies the shading rate rather than the overall resolution. Most people should leave this setting on the default 1.0 times option. So with Metro Exodus, there really isn't a lot of settings you can tweak. Basically, everything is bundled into the quality setting, and then most of the other settings are things related to Gameworks and RTX. So overall, it's a very simple affair. My recommendation for most people is to still use the ultra quality setting. Extreme comes with a sizable performance hit despite only small changes to visuals. Those who prefer a brighter game should opt for the high mode, but there is a noticeable difference overall between high and ultra that sees me favour ultra in most instances, while mid-range gamers can gain a lot of performance with the medium mode at a reasonably big loss to visual quality. For the other settings, I recommend motion blur on either normal or low, depending on your preference. I'd leave all of NVIDIA's features disabled, so that's DLSS off, ray tracing off, hair works off, and tessellation off, with physics really doing nothing, so that setting's up to you. DLSS blows the image, so it isn't worth using. I don't mind ray tracing in this game, but the performance cost of 30 to 40% is still too high, while hair works and tessellation are also far too intensive for the visual improvement you get. And then I'd recommend texture filtering at the maximum AF16X and the default shading rate option of one times. With those settings in play, NVIDIA GPU owners will see around a 20% performance improvement compared to having every setting except NVIDIA's RTX features enabled. So ultra setting gamers will see a 20% improvement, high setting gamers 20% as well, while the two modes have a 17% gap between them. And again, the choice between ultra and high is largely down to which visual style you prefer, so that's why I'm recommending either option with a personal preference for ultra. AMD GPU owners will see larger gains, up around 30% on average, and even higher for 1% lows. This 20 to 30% improvement does come with some reductions to visual quality from canning, tessellation, and hairworks. However, the best part is all the other excellent visual features are retained. While I do think both features and even ray tracing have their benefits, the game still looks spectacular with those settings disabled while running a lot better and more consistently. However, I do wish that 4A games had opened up the quality options a bit more rather than bundling everything together into really basic presets. I feel we probably could have achieved more than a 20 to 30% performance uplift for similar visual quality if we had access to other options. I also suspect a lot of people were already playing with Hairworks disabled, so the performance gains drop even further when you take that out of calculations. Finally, I really wish this wasn't a Gameworks title because I feel both hair simulations and tessellation could have been integrated at much lower performance costs than what this game currently offers, which would benefit both NVIDIA and AMD GPU owners. That's it for this one. So far I'm having a blast playing Metro Exodus, so I can't wait to stop benchmarking and actually just get into playing the game through. It seems like a lot of fun. If you missed either our ray tracing or general benchmark coverage, that's already up on the channel. And of course, subscribe for more optimization guides for upcoming games. Because they're supporting us on Patreon as well, as it you know takes a bit of time to put these sorts of videos together, and we appreciate the support from you guys that makes it possible. And I'll catch you in the next one.